Well, the Steelers off this week. They saw the Browns win a game without Baker Mayfield. They also saw the Ravens lose at home to an upstart Cincinnati Bengal team. So for the Steelers, Mark, coming back, it's going to be Pittsburgh, Cleveland. You'll see that game live here on KDKA. Um, Cleveland may or may not have Baker Mayfield. Uh, who do you think is a better matchup for the Steelers to be successful? Is it Mayfield or what we saw you know, from Case Keenum in that game the other night? Because he looked pretty good. I think they're very similar, especially at banged up Baker Mayfield right now. He's not going to be able to do stuff where he can get out of the pocket and make plays happen without fearing of that shoulder just popping out once again. I mean, the biggest thing to this game is we saw it against the Denver game and we saw it late in the Seattle game is, how are you going to stop that run? I mean, there were gaping holes, and that has nothing to do with the quarterback. And the Steelers tend to uh, uh, float out of their gaps from time to time in that outside zone scheme. So I would be a little bit more worried about how you're going to defend that run, regardless if it's, obviously it's not Hunt, but if it's Chubb or Johnson or whoever it is, I mean, there is just gaping holes right there. So I'm more worried about that than whether it's Case Keenum or, or Baker Mayfield. Yeah, to that point, it's that offensive line. Cleveland's offensive line was outstanding Thursday night. And I think Mayfield brings an excitable element. He brings a leadership, a rah, rah, let's go get him element to that team. I think they're talented enough. They don't need that anymore. I think Case Keenum is calmer. He's a veteran. He can go in the huddle and do what they need to win games. They've got a great defense. They've got a really good running game. I think what Cleveland is finding out is they're glad they didn't sign Baker Mayfield to a long-term extension. Yeah, I'd rather, if, as a Steelers fan, as someone who wants to see them win this coming Sunday, I'd rather see Mayfield in there at less than 100%. He'd have to be less than 100%, I would imagine. And less than 100% of their full complement in the running game as well, because then Mayfield starts to feel like he's got to do too much, puts too much of the offense on his shoulders, starts to make a key mistake or two here or there. The Steelers capitalize the, on that. If they're going with Case Keenum, maybe they do focus more on the running game. And as we saw in the second half of that Seattle game at Heinz Field, I don't want anybody, I don't want anybody going up against the Steelers defense right now focused on the running game because outside of Cam Hayward and TJ Watt, I don't see anybody standing up to the opposition running game. Steeler loss to Cincinnati doesn't appear as bad now as it did then. So I'll give you guys an opportunity to change whatever you said at the beginning of the season. Order of finish here. So, Mark, back to you. Now, we only have uh, how many weeks left of the season? One through four. Give me who's going to be one in the AFC North down to last. Wow. No, I'm, I'm going with Cincinnati. I'm doing a little bit of a flip here. Um, although I was on board maybe two weeks ago, them being the real deal here. So I'm going Cincinnati one. I'm going all the way to. Uh, actually, I'm not a big Ravens fan, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go Cleveland two, Steelers three, then I'm going to go Browns. Wow. Oh, Ravens last. I might say Ravens wow. last. Browns. I don't know. Whoever it is, it doesn't matter because <laughs> none of those teams are going to make it to the what, AFC Championship what, game. Anymore. What about Kaboom? What about the Oilers? Where do you have them? You want to just throw another team <laughs> right in there while the, you're at it? We're right next to the Titans. <laughs> The Titans look like the team to beat right now in the AFC based on how they're going. All right, Jeff, what do you say about, you know, are you, I don't know what you had at the beginning of the season. Uh, I didn't have Cincinnati, I could tell you that, but right now it looks like they're the best team emerging anyway. Yeah, I had to start the season. I had Cleveland, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati. Um, you know, it used to be going into Ohio was a layup. Uh, now it is not. Uh, and Cincinnati, I, I, I want to say they're for real. It's seven games in. Their defense is good, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Baltimore and Pittsburgh tied. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it, like you, Jeff, at the beginning of the year, oh, I had it: uh, Cleveland, Baltimore, uh, Steelers, Cincy. I do think we've got to reshuffle that. I don't know if Cincy is the clear-cut favorite in the division now. I still think any team with Lamar Jackson at the helm uh, can. They, he can turn the game on a dime. He's, he's one of the few singular superstars in the game that can take it over. And who you look at his passing stats at the end of the day, and where did that come from? Oh, well, he took it over with his legs and his ability to change the game on the run. So I still think Baltimore won. Uh, I think I like Cincy, too, now. And I'd probably still lean Cleveland and the Steelers in some sort of 3-4 mishmash. But it's going to be tight. It feels like this division is showing that it's going to cannibalize itself. Now that they're getting the first couple tastes of each other, and it could be four teams all clumped up between nine and 11 wins. Yeah, plus the schedules for all of these teams is going to be difficult. All right, 30 seconds each. Tell me what's going to happen next Sunday. Give me a score and why they either win or lose. Mark, start with you again. Pittsburgh, Cleveland. Well, I'm going with Cleveland because they're running game. Cleveland 20, 
Pittsburgh 17. Jeff. I'm going to go with uh, Cleveland as well. I'd say Cleveland 24, Steelers 10. Yeah, I have it a little bit closer. Browns 27, Steelers 23. I just, like Mark said, that run game scares the heck out of me after the way the Steelers performed against the Seahawks. Yeah. Dearness Johnson came out of nowhere and rushed for 146 yards. And you're right, Mark. There were so many gaping holes. Anyone could have done it. Boy, you give Najee Harris those kind of holes. Who knows what can happen? And hopefully the Seals can do that against a defensive line that's pretty good. You'll see that game on KDK on Sunday, followed by post game. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about the Red Hot Penguins. Why have they been successful despite missing all of their top end talent? We'll delve into that next right here on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown.